Okay. Let's do some things. In the last stream when I left off, I was working my way through this to-do, and I'm going to go try and make more of an impact on it now. <laughs> it's currently 370 lines, although many of them are blank lines. And I want to get it close to zero. I mean, some of the things in here are not explicitly bugs. They're more like ideas for the future. So maybe I'll put those in a separate ideas file as we encounter them. But I definitely want to get the bug related things to zero. OK. So this, I said I have an error in messaging. This could be hairy, so I'm maybe not going to do this one first. Um, and I believe the error is just, um, you know, we have a default value of this parameter that's another procedure. So we'll see what happens there. If statement at top level parses for some reason, we can do that. We can do these. And then this is kind of vague, so we'll skip that for now. Um, this is probably fixed, um, but we'll take a look at that one. Uh, this is like a code generation thing. We can wait on that because this code is, this code works. It's just not maybe doing the right thing. And this might have been fixed anyway. Um, okay, that's, that's very tractable. This is more of an idea than a bug. Um, okay, this is definitely something that should happen. And, you know, I'm probably going to get dinner in like an hour 15. So there's, it's very unlikely we would do all of these in that time. So then We'll see where we get to, and then we'll see uh, where that leaves us. All right. Uh, which one of these do I want to do first? Let's do this one. I feel like this one is fixed, um, but let's figure it out. OK, the fact that we get, if we actually get two casts here, that's a problem too. So we need to investigate both of these. First, uh, are we in the bug 42 folder? Yes. So OK, well, that's, that's our other problem that we were doing. Uh, this is just a test that's no longer applicable to anything. Well, it looks like. Um, it's not too much of a surprise, but it looks like I fixed this since I put it in the to-do file. Um, let's, however, investigate this note. Do we get two casts here? Because there really should be one. There should be, so size of con context, whatever ends up in the context struct for the program, you know, that's going to be something Let's say it's like 60 bytes or whatever. I don't know how big. Uh, 64, maybe. I don't know. Um, that's an integer of an unsolidified size. So at some point, that gets turned into an S32. Um, and that should be one cast. So let's, let's see that. We are, we are running this, all right? So um, I don't know if it's actually generating a cast here. OK, yeah, this is implicit cast. So let's just see. Um, So 
this might fire on a bunch of different files, but we'll see. Uh, 10, line 10. That might at least cut it down. No. All right. Um, maybe we're not constructing an S cast because there's that thing. Um, there's that thing that we did yesterday. Where even was that? Um, about copying the literal. Well, there's do number solidify cast. Let's look there. Because I think that's really what we want. Expression line number equal ten. Okay, where are we at? Expression file name. It is in foo, so that's great. Um, So we're making a new type definition. The old type is just going to be like a number at this point. Yeah, it's, an, it's a number literal. So that's not a big deal. And we make an implicit cast, so that's fine. And now we're Whoa, that's why we get two things. We're also doing a number solidify cast here. Why are we doing that? Is one like a signedness? This is a signedness cast. Right, so I'm doing a cast for to signed. Right, so if I look at if I look at the type of this now, um, this will have some number flags, and that's 65. So 1 means is a number, and I bet 40 means sign. I'm in the right header file. Yeah, 40 is signed. So it's signed, but we haven't said anything about its size. Um, now the thing is, I don't think I have to do these separately. There's two things I could do. One is if I layer on another cast, I could peel off the previous cast. But the other thing I could do is just not do two casts. Like I could just say, hey, we also want this flag unsigned or signed. As long as this routine will handle both, which I think it probably will. Right, so this is just getting rid of the size flags, the old size flags. And then we just or on the new flags. So I believe that this is just simplifiable.
number size just got passed in. Oh, we do strip off the cast. Okay. Um, that actually may be wrong in some cases. So uh, let me let me write that down. Um, only strip cast if it's a number cast. I don't know. Anyway, we shouldn't we shouldn't generate shouldn't generate those casts anyway. And I'm looking at inner expression here, but really I should do the substitution because that's a literal. Yeah, we're going to make several changes here, folks. We are going to make several changes. Uh, inner um, I mean, yeah. Because this will make code generation easier when we don't have to generate as many intermediate weirdnesses. All right, so the first change is to not layer these casts on up here. We're just going to save these flags. Um, yeah, I think, I think that has the same meaning. So, so, uh, we're going to say U32 signage flags. And then uh, where was my other one? Where's my unsigned? Signage flags is going to be unsigned. And then down here, we're just going to say how about that? What's under my keyboard? There we go. Okay. That appears to, I mean, that program doesn't do anything. Let's just go for the release compiler. Have I tried four coder very briefly? And it wasn't really in a condition to use back when I tried it, but that was a long time ago. Uh, but the thing is, I don't really have time to learn another editor, especially not one that requires me to program in C or C++ while I'm doing all these other things. It's just too many things to do at once, right? So I'm sticking with Emacs until I either write my own editor or have enough things off my plate that I could learn a new editor. As terrible as Emacs is. All right, well, Sokoban runs. Let's try our, our tests. Awesome. So that is a successful change. We're going to delete all these comments. 
I should have counted lines of code. That's certainly a net win in terms of lines of code. Let's do that for now. All right, 41233. Three. Someone remember that number. We'll see if we go up or down for the day. Okay, that was thing one. Second thing I was going to do was the substitution here in number check and solidify. So, uh, you know, if we get an expression like a, so our intention here was that if the thing that we're casting is a literal, just make a new literal and operate on it. Uh, as opposed to giving us another, a deeper tree for people to try to make sense of later. Um, but we won't see if it's a literal if we're just checking. So where, where is that assignment? Um, it's in do number, it's in solidify cast, right? So we're looking at inner expression. And really what we want to do is say while inner expression substitution like that. Um, that way, so when we like have a size of or whatever, the size of gives us a tree node. And yeah, you know, the way, the whole way that we're doing switchable expressions may need to change in the end. Because <laughs> we, we actually want to use substitution for that. Anyway, so we're skipping substitutions here. So that if it's a literal, for example, we'll then see it down here. Now, if this code is buggy, then we just did something bad. Um, it also might be slower for all I know. Anyway. Let's just try that out. Didn't crash. It ran. And they built Sokoban, so that's good. Um, I don't believe that this is necessary right here. I think this is the old version of what this does now, right? So I think I can say assert false here. Let's, let's see. I think I can say assert false there. Maybe I'm wrong. I give myself a 50% chance of being wrong. Maybe that's low, 70% chance of being wrong. Yep, okay. Um, Well, we'll just do that. And we'll check this in because we have a third change. that we are interested in. Make sure that runs. Let's make sure that runs. Boom, all right.
Did I end up going with that suggestion Fabian had on Twitter? I don't know. That's like work that I'm not going to do for like a month. Why are you asking about that? Probably not. It doesn't seem very appealing to me, but we'll see. I mean, I have to look into it. Um, How do I not use a GUI editor with mouse scrolling features? Why would you use mouse scrolling? <coughs> These files are too big to mouse scroll, dude. Like, this file is 9,000 lines. Why would you mouse scroll through 9,000 lines? It doesn't make sense. No, those are not unit tests. Why does everybody ask that? They're not unit tests. I have a free scrolling mouse. Here's what happens. Let's go to the top of the file. Here's what happens if I try to mouse scroll through this file with a free scrolling mouse. Ready? Well, Emacs is crappy and slow, so that, I don't even know why it stopped. It just, oh, it hung. It hung and then jumped to the bottom. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone who says garbage collection is really great, look, it's just hanging and not able to keep up with my mouse input. And then it jumps to the top of the file. Garbage collected runtime system. Wait, how did this get pasted here? What the hell just happened? No, a 9,000 line file is not a red flag. What's a red flag? It's a giant project full of 400 red fly line files. A 9,000 line file is probably an indicator that you know what things belong together. <laughs> yeah, this mouse wheel, um, it's actually, God, Emacs is so crappy. So even, uh, this is a Logitech G900, which is a gamer mouse. So I'm just gonna start scrolling down the file. Oh look. Well, for some reason, it's interpreting triple wheel down as like a different thing. Maybe it's not actually hanging. Maybe that's like some delay from the error message. Oh, look, now it didn't scroll. What? Just now it's completely failing. OK, look, I'm just scroll. It undefined mouse wheel somehow. It undefined mouse wheel. Mouse wheel no longer works. I, did you guys see me do anything to undefine mouse wheel? No. Now I can't, now the cursor won't, what's going on? Okay, wait, I, it was in some weird mode. Dude, I don't know. Okay, let's try again. Ready? Scroll. Look, the wheel's still spinning. Oh. Oh. People who say this is acceptable are just, and most text editors are slower than Emacs. That's the thing, right? Just take your garbage collector and jump out the window. That's all I have to say. Okay, I was gonna do, okay, this is with restricted mouse wheel now. So this button here on the G900 changes it from like free floating to like notch by notch. So here's notch by notch scroll. I think it's doing a full page down every notch or something. I don't know, maybe it's accelerating. Okay, when I do that, it's just enough that it doesn't, it's very chunky and non-smooth, but it at least doesn't totally overwhelm Emacs. Or as soon as I put it in free scroll. Oh, wait, wait. Oh. Uh. God. Programmers are so bad at their job. I can't believe it. Okay. 
Okay. I had this only strip cast if it's a number cast, but I'm going to cross that out because I don't think that's necessary given that I'm jumping past substitutions now anyway. That may be a good thing to investigate much later when we're actually working seriously on efficiency of compiler output, uh, but we're not doing that right now. <laughs> right now we're mostly working on correctness, and the whole reason I went down that rat hole in the first place was because uh, of the th that maybe something wasn't correct, but it was fine. Um, let's do this one because this one is maybe easy or maybe we decide not to do it. Uh, evaluate to Boolean constant. So what is that? Evaluate to Boolean constant. So we return literal true or literal false. Um, Oh, no, this is an optimization. So, um, right, this is a thing I just had. Optimizations come later. We just want correctness. Um, yeah, so we won't do that. Okay, well, here's one. For some reason, if statements parse at top level, which they shouldn't, or they used to at some point. Let's go back to foo. Let's just say if uh, s, uh, if Like, if that parses, that's no good. Maybe I fixed that. Oh, other. No. Well, that parses. Um, we're probably just falling through in the parser. Like, we do, we do a parse statement at the top level. Um, but we should be, what we should be doing is saying everything at the top level has to be either one of these certain directives like import or whatever or a run directive. And if it's, if it's not right now, we're just dropping it on the floor probably, but not giving an error message, which is weird. So what if I say three is equal to five? Does that work? Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's fix that. Let's fix that. Parse top level. Parse block. Accept top level expression. If it's a load directive, if it's a run directive, if it's a foreign library. Okay, that's for something else. Uh, okay, well, well, we'll make it this. Case ask declaration. Don't do anything for declarations. Um, the fact that they are already in the scope is enough. Break default report error. Uh, expert um, illegal expression at uh, inside well I have to try this inside structs too so maybe this isn't the right way to solve it uh, we'll see illegal expression at top level maybe top level isn't the right way to say valid options are declarations. I don't know, that's not really exhaustive. 
I don't have an interp though, because I'm the interp. Parse block local function declarations are illegal. So slow. And it still accepted it. Did I? All right. All right. Illegal expression at top level. Wait, that's a declaration. I really broke something. Valid options are declarations and certain directives. Sure. So it scope directive is legal I don't know we'll just see what else it complains about oh it's static if maybe All right. So now it's actually complaining about things that are illegal. That's good. Okay. Let's see if we can build all our tests. Probably in the whole giant program, there's some directive or something that I forgot about. Yeah. Oh, look, this is a bug. This is an expression. This looks like a function call because there's no colon colon here. It looks like we're calling a function called WSX overlapped window, right? But we're not. It's funny the things that will make their way, the bugs that will stay there, right? So these need to be like that. All right. Hey. All right. So. Well, it didn't ever work. So the deal was it was throwing away those expressions. And then what was happening was there was no declaration of these variables ever, right? But nobody was trying to use them yet. So nobody ever noticed that there was no declaration for these. That's what happened. Maybe we'll look at this one. How many lines are we down to here? 360. I do believe we increased our line count there. Yeah, by like 20 something. Reject block. Maybe, I feel like maybe I've cleaned this up since I wrote this comment, but. It's 
just see what happens. Even if this appears to work, we probably need to run it in a debug build just to make sure there's no assertions. So that'll save us some lines of code right there because we're not counting comments. Let's do release build. Let's go to to do and clear this out. This build is done. Sokoban builds and runs. Tests build. Tests run. I need to put a thing here that summarizes everything, so I don't need to scroll up. Maybe Abner will do that. New vestigial code from reject block. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to test data scopes in addition to top level scopes. So um, going back to foo here. Let's bring this stuff back. So, of course, we'll get errors here. What happens if I put this in a struct? I'm not convinced that that'll kick in. Ha <laughs> ha! I already checked for that, just not at top level. Where do I check for that? Well, okay, I'll make a note here. Um, this seems somewhat redundant with what happens in Exactly.
well, part of what F18 does is its own thing. But part of it is about rejecting. That should, uh, you know what, I'm going to check this in, but then we're going to keep going on this because I'm actually not sure. I wonder if the global scope is marked as imperative. Okay. Okay, let's check this in for safety. Not really that scary of a change, but you know. All right, so where are we for line count? Two, four, one. So let's see if we can get back down. Um, let's let's see. So when we parse top level. And we say parse block. How is that scope marked? Load current scope. Block data declarations. That's correct. So So we should get to down here. And we do. Wait, what? If result belongs to struct. What is result? Okay. I think this is really old. Um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> we're going to put what we just did in accept top level expression we're going to move that checking here and then we're going to consider moving the other checking so because we want to clean this up and if your code just keeps getting more sprawling over time. That's just bad, right? We want to keep things good. So we're going to do another switch expert type. Of course, I'm asserting expert. Really, if I assert that, it should be here. Doesn't make sense to assert that. All right. If it's a place directive, we do something. Okay, whatever. This is just the old thing. Don't like Emacs's indentation here, but I'm not going to try to fix it. All 
Okay. So I'm not going to do a thorough job of testing all the weird cases that should or should not be legal because I think we'll hit those later when we fuzz things. Um, all right, so I want to verify that this didn't break anything, obvious. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to go back to this and we're going to just make this about actually doing the old thing that it did. You know, something like that. Praise error. It's not a praise error, it's a parse error, buddy. All right. Whoa, okay. Oh, right, because this accept top level expression already had cases for these things for load, run, and foreign library. So we need that. Okay, that's good. And then um, no, not the debug compiler, the release compiler. All right. Now, now, well, we'll count. How did we only save like one line of code or less? That's weird. I would have thought we saved more than that. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's test that. This is still illegal, first of all. Okay, that's good. That's fine. We can give better error messages later. And then, how about this? my horrible okay um, that I believe is the next step Okay, and now there's the question. Instead of calling accept top level expression here,
Oh wait, the reason we have this Oh! Ha ha! Ha ha! The reason we have this factored into a separate thing is the following. You might not just get a block from the parser, right? The user might construct a syntax tree arbitrarily and hand it to you. So we have this accept top level expression thing um, that gets called from other places as well. Like when we're importing Oh, well, here as well. Oh, God. Okay. Um, what does this mean? This means... Let me stop my dishwasher for you. This means that really I would rather have that checking back in the other place, I think, for all of this. For all of this. Why does everybody... I need to make a fact that mentions, that says don't ask about self-hosting compiler. I don't know why so many people are interested in that. Doesn't I, I? I do. I do know. I do know. I just wish they weren't. I need to make next time during a post stream when I'm just chilling. I'll type up frequently asked questions if people remind me. Okay. Um, <sighs> Right, so I keep one thing that I have to constantly remember is that parsing is not really the place to do checking like this. So like for example, this shouldn't even be in parser, first of all, right? Like that, that should be in a totally different file. Let's make sure that compiles. Um, Yeah, I think um, sanity check. OK. 
Okay, wait. These are not, this is a separate array. So we're going to do that. So first we're going to make sure it compiles and runs. And then we're going to do a little more factoring. And this should not be report parser. So that seems to work. That seems to work. We've got to make sure we're actually catching things, um, which we won't be yet. Well, maybe we will. Maybe we will. But let's try the struct version first. Um, yep. And then the non-struct version. Yep. I mean, we're spamming with too many error messages. But it's not the worst thing. OK. Now. directly calls but uh, that was before this procedure existed it is likely So um, for these three, load, run, or foreign library.
attempt to use a directive that is inside a struct that is only legal at top level. Uh, else, Okay, now, the whole reason I did this is because I shouldn't have to do that. Not that it makes much difference. Okay, do we still catch these bugs? Yes, wow, we're, wait, what? We're sure reporting too many errors. Why are we complaining about imports? Yeah, oh boy, um, what did I just do? Illegal expression at top level. Oh, because we're not breaking. Frickin' C++ switch statements. Tom Duff. What? Why is there something... We're somehow loading something that we weren't loading before. Oh God. Okay, here's the deal. If the block is waiting on static if, we are not supposed to do this stuff yet. We're going to need to deal with that complication. All right. So it was loading bananas, which is old code and isn't supposed to get loaded because it was using operator new, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, yeah. All right. And it is complaining about this illegal stuff correctly. Um, I'm not sure why we're complaining about these things three times. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? I'm going to look at that because that might signal something weird happening, but the first failed test is a number cast thing that I don't care enough about right now to fix because I'm not sure it's the right design decision. 
anyway, so I'm not sure that it should be a bug. Okay, um... Okay, so Felt like I was going to do something else before I went to lunch, but now I don't remember what it is. Not lunch, dinner, whatever, whatever meal. Oh, we're so many more lines of code. It's so painful. It's like I'm not even doing anything, man. I guess I'm elaborating on the error messages a little bit. That's worth some lines of code. That's worth some lines of code. What have I forgotten to do? Maybe that's it. I just had wanted to call this on a per block basis. Oh, figuring out the error spamming. Yes, that's what I was going to do. Thank you. So why... Am I set to the right file? Okay, so here... We're from parse block, we're in sanity check non-imperative scope. I mean, it has to be from here. The whole time. I mean. Okay. Why are we here again? Why are we parsing this twice? Okay, 
Okay, wait, we're here. Starting over. Come out of this routine. Oh God, do I have this inside? I have this inside the wrong loop. <laughs> so sanity checking the block. Yeah, that's great. This is why you look into these things. I'm sanity checking the whole scope inside the loop instead of outside the loop. So like, that was, that was bad news bears. There we go. Look, it's also much faster. Whoops, that's not, I want to run tests. All right, it's time for me to get some dinner. And uh, I'll probably stream some more tonight because we have made some progress in this file, but there's many more things. Let's pick some more things. Um, I'm going to go for the easier things just to reduce the number of stuff that I'm thinking about. And then we'll attack some of the harder things when we have more mental space for thinking. And maybe I won't do those on stream because honestly, it's a lot harder to think while streaming. Uh, okay, well, let's definitely investigate that. Maybe we could do this one. Like this is not a bug but it's worth looking at. I don't even know what that is. Const expert cast of a string. I don't even know what I meant there. What is const expert cast of a string? Casting it to what? Well, I'll investigate the file at least and see if I can figure out what I meant. And if I can't figure it out, we'll delete it. Uh-oh, that looks bad. So some of these have probably been fixed. probably enough for the near future. We're down to 349 lines. Do I schedule my day? No. No, I don't. All right, folks, thanks for coming by. I'll probably start the scream, stream, not the scream, the stream, in maybe an hour, maybe less. We'll see how it goes. Just taking a break. And we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs>